and I'm be honest, I don't like washing dishes, but they be getting washed though because I also don't like a dirty house. So Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. My name is Ashley Richardson and that's Miss Richardson to you if you are a student watching. And today we are making a butter pecan pound cake. Stay tuned. Before we actually get started into putting the cake together, I have my pack of pecans here. Just a small pack I got from the grocery store and I am going to cut the bag open and then toss them um, in a little bit of brown sugar, probably about two tablespoons. And I'm gonna put them in the pan and I'm going to roast them in the oven um, at 350 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes. And what this will do is like, it's gonna candy the pecans a little bit and roasting them, put them in the oven and allowing them to bake um, really brings out that nutty, uh, full flavor of the pecan and so that's what we're getting ready to do next so I have my full pack of my pecans here and I tossed it with two tablespoons of light brown sugar this part over here I'm just going to reserve for garnish at the end and then the larger section on this side I'm going to put in the food processor and pulse it until it's very fine so that when it's incorporating into the cake batter you get a natural nutty flavor in the cake batter now if you don't want to go through putting the brown sugar on there. You could easily buy some candy pecans. Trader Joe's has amazing candy pecans. I was just out of those, but no worries. You can candy them yourself with just um, a little brown sugar and putting them in the oven. And so we're gonna put these in the oven for 300, at 350 degrees for about 15 or 20 minutes um, until we get that nice robust flavor of the pecan. Okay. So here, is what the nuts look like after coming out of the oven. You can see they are a little more brown and you know that they're ready when you begin to smell that nuttiness. I could, you know, smell that brown sugar. This is gonna taste amazing. Like I said before, this part I'm gonna put in the food processor to blend into the cake and this part is going to be reserved for garnish. Didn't take long to roast at all. Another thing that you could do, let me flip the camera around. Another thing that you could do is that you could put the pecans in a frying pan with a little bit of butter and the brown sugar there and you could toast them on top of the stove. That would be amazing, especially with that melted butter and the brown sugar. Just some enhancements. You don't have to candy your pecans at all. I have done these cakes without candying the pecans and just mixing the pecans in um, just regularly. And but you know, just adding a little bit of um, more levels of flavor. And so just another recommendation there. Okay, now let's get them in the food processor. As you can see, it does not take long for it to get to that nice. That's the consistency that I want. I don't want pecan pieces in the cake. Um, I, I want this incorporated into the cake so it just kind of disappears into the batter and that is the consistency that I'm looking for. Now, if you want the larger pieces in the cake, you know, that's your portion of cake. You put your portion of pecan in your portion of cake. But in my portion of cake, I want the finer pecans. And so you can't tell what's a pecan and what's brown sugar and all of that flavor is gonna get mixed in. And as you can see, it didn't take a lot of pecans to produce a nice amount to go into the cake and I still have some left over for garnish. Okay, let's get into the rest of the cake. Okay, so let me give you a rundown of the ingredients that are going in the cake. Just like in all of my pound cakes, the base is always the same. I have three sticks of salted butter, a full block of cream cheese, five eggs, and all of these are room temperature. 
we're gonna put in three cups of sugar um three cups of swans down cake flour and i have two boxes out because one of these boxes is almost empty and then and let me go back to the sugar i'm gonna do two cups of the white sugar and then one cup of the brown sugar because that brown sugar is really going to complement the flavor of the pecans and then as stated before i have my food let's see my food processed pecans and brown sugar that's going to be incorporated into the batter and as far as the other flavor profiles that i'm going to put in here as always i'm going to put in a teaspoon of cream bouquet if you watch um beautiful two creations with donna she always puts in her cream bouquet and she describes it as bakery in a bottle and i can't think of a better description than that so we're going to put a teaspoon of bakery in the bottle i'll probably put in about three teaspoons of vanilla extract um i have pure almond extract i'll put about half a teaspoon of that and then here another thing that i got from watching her channel all these let's see if you can see these lorraine oils i'm gonna put in a full bottle and i think this is maybe a full teaspoon but um it's a full dram and i'm gonna put in a full dram of this pecan oil well if you could see it if it were focused and then i have black walnut oil there you go some black walnut oil i'll probably put in half a teaspoon of this and then reserve some for the icing or the glaze um and then i have some let's adjust the camera here i also have some um hazelnut coffee creamer and you might be thinking well this is a butter pecan cake why are you putting in all these extra flavors i just like how all these tree nuts complement each other so if you are allergic to tree nuts this is definitely not the cake for you the primary flavor will be pecans because of course i have the pecans the actual pecans that are going in the cake and then i have the full dram of the pecan oil but i have found that the black walnut the almond um the hazelnut coffee creamer they just really complement the flavor of the pecans very well. So I'm going to start off creaming my three sticks of butter and my full block of cream cheese and my three cups of sugar. Again, that's two cups of white sugar, one cup of brown sugar, and I'm going to cream all of those until they are light and fluffy. What I have found is that when I am creaming with, um, cream cheese as opposed to milk it creams a lot faster that process of getting to light and fluffy is a lot faster um, but of course you just want to mix until you don't hear any of the the sugar the sugar should be silent and then um, after all of that's done and I've creamed I'll show you what that looks like at the end another fun fact about me is that I pray over all of my cakes um, and all things we should acknowledge Christ and you might think you know that's a little weird but I, I don't know I just the my prayer is always the joy that I get in baking the cake um, is the joy that other people get while eating the cake is something that I've discovered that I really, really like doing. Um, it's very therapeutic and relaxing for me and I'm just grateful for the opportunity and the resources to be able to bake cakes especially with things costing as much as they do god has still blessed me to be able to buy eggs and buy butter and buy sugar and i'm just i'm grateful for that so i'm always thankful to the lord for the opportunities that he gives me to bake and i just my request is just always that the joy that i get out of baking it is the joy that people receive from eating it and that his glory may be revealed even in the cake baking because um it should be and you know am i perfect no do we do i make mistakes absolutely because we've all um fallen short but um I will tell you, when I haven't prayed over my cakes, that's when I've had the most issues. And so even down to baking the cake, I want to give God his reverence. Um, I want to make sure that I honor him. And 
I just want people to experience the joy eating it as I do in baking it. So I don't know what your beliefs are and I'm not trying to proselytize or beat anybody over the head with my spiritual beliefs or with my religion, but the Bible is very clear that if we are ashamed of him, then he will be ashamed of us. And so I will never be ashamed of Jesus Christ. All right. a full teaspoon. I definitely said a half, but it's going to be a full one of the almond, and that is okay with me. Let's see. I think this is, yeah, this dram is definitely a full teaspoon. And I'll, um, I'll probably do another teaspoon in, well, there's no probably. I will do another full teaspoon in the glaze. And then this is the black walnut. And I'll just do a half a teaspoon here because I don't want to overpower the pecan. Okay. If you're using the cream bouquet, please make sure to shake it. Get all those emollients and everything mixed into it. Mixed around well. sugar and cream cheese have gotten to a nice fluffy creamy consistency you can tell by the nice stiff peaks and this is how long you want to cream it this is what it should look like before you start adding your eggs so clearly I am on the phone I was actually talking to my bestest um, and so that's why editing Ashley is coming back with the uh, voiceover but notice how I am cracking the eggs one at a time. I'm not cracking them over the bowl because you never want to do that just in case. Um, I don't know, there's a bad egg or you get some shell in the egg. So uh, some shell in the batter. So always make sure to crack your eggs separately and add them one at a time. Editing Ashley is also going to skip past me adding in these eggs one, one at a time. You don't need to see that. Just know that you need to mix the eggs until the yolk disappears. It does not take long at all because at this point, you do not want to overmix the batter. I'm going to ramp up the speed just a little bit just to make sure that the yolk is well incorporated and it's good and mixed in. And then I'm going to stop it. And now it's time to add in our flour. Make sure that you add your flour in one cup at a time. And at, it is at this time during the mixing process that I will add in my hazelnut coffee creamer. I'm going to also go ahead and add in those pulsed pieces of the pecans and finish the rest mixing by hand. And then we'll be ready to put it in the baking dish. All right, so I have mixed in my three cups of flour and it's totally not mixed yet because I will do the last little bit by hand but now is the time where I'm going to put in the coffee creamer and the roasted pecans and so I'm going to go ahead and slide all of those in there okay and I'm going to add let's see let's let's do two tablespoons of the hazelnut coffee creamer and these will be the last two ingredients that 
I mix in. Side note, please remember as you were mixing and creaming and doing all those things that you stop and scrape down the side of your bowl to make sure that everything along the edges get mixed in. Watch the color transform. just that quickly I'm done I'm gonna mix the rest by hand and then we're going to get the cake batter into the pan so I'm going to thoroughly spray my bunt pan this is about a 15 cup capacity and I'm gonna use my food line baking spray. Now I normally do the baking spray and flour the pan because I just don't want any of my cake sticking. I, I just don't feel like flouring the pan today. So we are going to spray the mess out of this pan and pray unto the Lord that we have no stickage. Turn to your neighbor and say, we will not have a cake sticking today. Now turn to your other neighbor and say, neighbor, and your neighbor gonna say, huh? And you gonna say, we will not have a cake sticking today in Jesus name. Okay, let me spray my pan. And when you're spraying, you wanna make sure that you get all along the edges and the tube. The great thing about the, the baking spray is that it has flour in it so you can see it. Okay. So that's what the inside of my pan looks like. I've gotten all along the edges and the tube. And we're now ready to put the batter inside. Y'all, I told a lie. I floured the inside of the pan. I just, I just don't want my pan sticking. You know how people say they done told a bald face lie? And it wasn't until much later that I realized, I was like, what's a bald face lie? What people really mean to say is a bold face lie. But I, I, I done set up here and told y'all a bald face lie that I wasn't gonna flour this pan knowing good and well that I was gonna flour this here pan. I did, I, I. I, and generally, when you use the baking spray that has the flour in it, you do not need to flour the pan. I just, I just want my cake to just, I just want the cake just to slide out. I don't want any hiccups. I don't want any issues. So y'all, y'all forgive me for telling that bald face a lie because I did flour this pan. So this is the batter. And that's what it looks like after mixing in the pecans. Very, very um, fine pieces of that pecan. I've tasted it, it is delicious. It's nice and whipped, it is flavorful, and we're gonna get the batter into the pan. And because it's so whipped, and thick, this is not a thin, runny batter. This is a thick batter, so you can't pour it. You're gonna have to lead it into the pan and scoop it out. But this is the consistency that you get when you bake with the cream cheese. It's very nice, very whipped. Oh, y'all, that's my mama. I'll call y'all back in a minute. All right, so, the batter is in the pan. I've smoothed it out with the spatula. Of course, you always want to give it a few knocks and a few little shakes. Pop, lock, and drop it. Pop, lock, and drop it. Now here I was talking about the Lord, now I'm talking about popping it, locking it, and dropping it. I'm still a work in progress. But you gonna pop it, lock it, and you don't wanna drop it, cause uh, That'd be a mess all on your floor. Make sure all the air bubbles out are out. Smooth it out on the top. I'm gonna put this in the oven at 315 degrees. I like to bake my cakes like my meat, long and slow. So this is going to take a full hour and a half to bake. And while this is baking, I'm gonna finish watching Law & Order Organized Crime 
with Elliot Stabler and them. So I'll call y'all back in a little bit. I always cover my food. I mean, whether I'm baking or cooking, I always use these little tents, these umbrellas to keep the food covered. You just never know what lurks. That's the sound we like to hear. Yay. I want y'all to get a look at that up close. Isn't she pretty? Mm, smells wonderful. So if you just look, we got a really nice bake here, nice rise. And, and even though she's been cooling for a little bit, it's still warm, but it, it's okay. It's cool enough that the glaze won't seep completely into the cake. And if it does, it just makes for a more, more moist cake. So I'm gonna sit this off to the side here. And I'm gonna remove my cooling rack. And now let's make our glaze. So here I have two cups of confectioner sugar and I'm gonna put the same flavorings in it that I did with the cake. So we're gonna do a teaspoon of cream bouquet. I'm going to do, mm, I'm gonna do two teaspoons of vanilla. And I think there's one other extract that I wanna add into the glaze that I did not put in the cake. So tea, tea, two teaspoons of vanilla. And of course, you add all of these extracts and flavorings into your personal taste, your personal taste. Here is the other half of that black walnut oil. No need to measure that. Um, so that's a half a teaspoon there. I have another pecan oil. So this is a brand new oil. I'm gonna open this up. And I'm going to do, actually I'm gonna do the full bottle. A full bottle in the cake and a full bottle in the glaze because remember the most prominent flavor that you wanna taste in a butter pecan cake is the butter pecan. Okay. Um, just a little bit of almond extract. I'll do half a teaspoon. And here is the international, oh, I, this is pumpkin spice. This is what I used in my quick bread. Hold please, let me get the, uh, hazelnut. Give me one sec. Ah, here we go. Hazelnut. And I'm going to put in uh, one, two tablespoons of that. And we're gonna mix and see what the consistency is. And then moving forward, if I wanna thin it out, I'll just put in some milk. But let's just mix this a little bit. Remember when you are creating your glazes and your icings, it's always best to start off with just, it's always best to start off with just a little bit of liquid. Remember you can always add more liquid, but you cannot take it out. So, And as you can tell, that is not, not a bad consistency, but it's not as thin as I would like it to be. So now I'm just going to add in milk just, let's see, we'll do it a tablespoon at a time. And I'll know what the consistency is when I when I see it. 
I'll, I'll know it. So I can't quite tell you what the measurements exactly are going to be just yet because um, I'll know it when I see it. Let me zoom you all out here a little bit. Pick. Okay. So I'm just gonna continue to stir. Okay, see how smooth that is? We are, you know what, that might, that might work. Oh, that smells amazing. Oh, there's one other extract that I do wanna add. This right here, this maple extract is amazing. I'm just gonna put a pinch in the aroma. I don't know, I, I think about, when I think about pecans, it also makes me think about maple and sweetness. So I'm just gonna put just a pinch of the maple extract in. Just a pinch. And by a pinch, I did a cap full. That's really gonna amp up the aroma, the flavor. Ooh, isn't that pretty? Okay. As you can see, making a glaze is so simple. It doesn't require a mixer. You can really just do it by hand. Okay, we are ready to glaze our cake. Move our cake back to center stage and let me, so y'all can see what's going on. Oh no, my battery's about to die. I might have to switch my batteries out. I'm gonna switch my battery out and I'm gonna call y'all right back. Don't go nowhere, I'm gonna call y'all right back. Okay, I told y'all I was gonna call y'all back. Now, I've switched out my battery and now we are ready to glaze the cake. I have my snazzy cake plate here ready and my knife ready to cut in just a little bit. And a very, a very nice pourable consistency. This is always my favorite part. I, it's something about that glaze. Look at that. Let me, let me zoom in so y'all can see. Look at that, y'all. And seeing it's just, it's thick enough that it completely, you coats, it gets, uh, gets a nice coating, but just thin enough that it pours. Let's put some on the inside here. Yep, and I tasted it and that, um, that maple, Gosh, that maple and hazelnut together is amazing. Let me get a spoon. No glaze left behind. Let's put the rest of it on the inside. So, full flavor impact all over the cake. And for the pierre de resistance, I think I said it right. Remember, and my hands are clean, my hands are clean. Um, Cause I know I took my gloves off, but my hands are clean. Remember, these are the pecans that we toasted earlier in the video with the brown sugar that I reserved for garnish. And now I'm just gonna decorate the cake here. And then we'll be ready to cut. Mm. That's gonna be a nice um, contrast of textures as well. Now, if y'all see I'm leaving off a spot, y'all let me know. So Ashley, you, you missed the spot. Y'all don't let me miss no spots now. 
because editing Ashley will go back and look at this footage and be like, now why didn't they tell me that I missed the spot? They, they knew, just like y'all didn't tell me in the last video that I had icing all over my lip. Y'all could have told me that. But, you know, I, I understand, I understand. Y'all, y'all don't let me miss a spot. This is pretty. And you know what, that, that brown sugar, I want all of that. Look at that. See if I can tilt it so you can see the inside. I don't want anything to fall. But look at that, guys. We have as a homemade butter pecan pound cake with a, gosh, a, <laughs> a nutty mapley glaze with butter pecan and um, brown sugar topping. Now it's time for everybody's favorite part, time to cut. Okay, where should we dig in everybody? Gosh, she's so pretty, I don't wanna cut her, <laughs> but we gonna cut her though. Okay, so in my fitness pal, I put this in for at least 24 servings. So if I, and for students who are watching, this is a fraction problem, a division problem. If I have a whole cake and I want 24 individual slices and I cut it into fourths, how many slices is that per fourth? So I need you all thinking students, what times four is equal to 24 and that's how many slices I'm gonna need in my section. So like when y'all see me doing weird things with my cake, it's me counting my calories because another fun fact about me is that I started baking my own cakes because I needed to know the calorie content and I just really enjoyed it. I really liked it. So this is me just delicately You know, kind of putting it into fourth so I'll know the size slice. Now I'm gonna cut a bigger slice for cameras for effect, but when y'all see me cutting these big hunks on camera, I don't ever finish the whole slice on camera. That slice might, it, like two or three days easily. Okay, so if I do sixth, that means I'll cut it to thirds because students remember thirds break down into six. We just finished a unit in fractions not too long ago. So I'm gonna cut a third here. I'm not gonna eat this whole third, but I'm gonna cut this third for camera. <gasps> Yo, look, that's beautiful. Oh, yes, ma'am. And then you got some of that extra glaze that's in the center there. Yum. Y'all look. Butter pecan cake. The texture. Oh, this is gonna be good, y'all. So I'm trying something a little bit different. I'm gonna sit and relax and taste the cake on camera. Welcome to my kitchen table. If you have been with me since day, day one, when I first started dropping my YouTube videos, I used to film everything at this kitchen table and I've tried some different things. So I'm back at the kitchen table and I have my cake here. It smells absolutely amazing. Oh my gosh, the consistency is so moist. So let's see, I want to start off with, I think just right here, I just wanna taste the cake first. Oh, and before, uh, uh, this is a real plate like glass, I have a real fork, so for all you plate snobs, I have a real cake, I mean a real plate. And for all you Utensil snobs, I have a real fork, no plastic or um, styrofoam. And I'll be honest, I don't like washing dishes. 
but they be getting washed though because I also don't like a dirty house. So I have a real plate, I have a real fork. Let's get into the cutlery and the, the dining experience here. I'm giving you a whole real placemat. I'm giving kitchen table. I'm, I'm giving you ambiance and mood and setting. Let me shut up and give you the, this cake. Okay, here we go. Mm. Y'all, oh my gosh. This right here is my swag. This right here is my swag. Pop my mouth that was so moist. Now I'm gonna tell you, cake is always better the next couple of days. But if it's this good today, baby, come tomorrow, come the next day, oh my goodness. Mm. Oh. Mm -mm -mm. Now you y'all remember when I told y'all I don't eat these big hunks. I be trying not to tell lies. Oh my gosh. Okay. I gotta stop. I have got to stop. This cake right here is amazing. Absolutely amazing. Y'all better bake this. Well, everybody, we have come to the end of another video. I have thoroughly enjoyed uh, filming today and just spending a little bit of time with you today, me and all of my antics. Y'all, it's spring break. I have energy, you know, I'm able to clown and make jokes, but I thank you so much for spending just a little bit of your time here with me today. Again, my name is Ashley Richardson and that's Miss Richardson to you if you are a student watching. And if you enjoyed what you watched today, please consider subscribing. Definitely comment on the channel. Um, like the videos. It really helps push my videos through the algorithm um, with likes and comments and shares. And so if you really like what you see, and if you certainly if you made it to the end of the video and you haven't subscribed, please consider being a subscriber. Please consider giving me a thumbs up and helping to push my videos through that algorithm. And I look forward to seeing you all again in the next video. Bye.